Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakahak Wadash. All praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakahak Wadash. I'm the brother Taziar Gabar. From the Prophets in Babylon, Waco, Texas camp, under the branch of the Prophets in Babylon, Tampa Bay, Florida camp. The Barners to the elders, apostles of Aslaka. The elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace salutations down to the hopeful elect. All right. House passes defense bill automatically registering men. 18 to 26 for draft. So this has been the talk of um, the week. The draft. Brothers have been doing you no know, videos on this topic. And it goes to show you that we are in the, you know, what Matthew 24 speaks about. Wars and rumors of wars. Okay, now they're talking about the draft. And, you know, the, the age to be, you know, registered is 18 to 26. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit of it. I might just play the video. So why is the military recruitment in this country such a mess? That's just what the top, one of the topics Fox and Friends Weekend co Pete Hexes addresses in his new book, War on Warriors, Behind the Betrayal of the Men Who Keep Us Free, which is out today, and you should pick it up. In the book, Pete Wright. That's right. It's out today, and a portion of it is about recruiting. Why aren't guys joining? And I wrote, we can't wait to recruit our largest and most important military demo until a crisis occurs. That's normal, strong mm -hmm. men. But that's just what the Biden woke policies have done. A social justice military fails to recruit the masculine men who make up our warrior class. No wonder there is a massive recruiting crisis in our military today, and there is. So, Pete, let's explore some of the stuff that's in this book. Yeah. I'm on page 112. Let's go to the next wall. All right, so th th these are the recruitment numbers right here. We had a segment a few months, a yeah. uh, few weeks ago, and they said that it's actually going up, but there's deeper uh, numbers. So these are 2023 numbers. They're all down. Army, okay. and you, if you're down 15,000 troops, that's a division. That's a division mm -hmm. that you have in staff with young privates. So Navy's down, Air Force is down. Marine Corps meets it because it's a little bit, their ads are a little bit more, hey, you know, the so, few, the proud, the Marines. In 2024, they say they're going to meet their goals because that's they're, they're reducing the goal number. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. They're taking gotcha. the number down say, oh, we don't need as so, many troops. So when they say they're on pace, it's because the number has changed. Yeah, they lower the standards, like everywhere else in the military. Lower the standards. So there's also the 77% of military Americans do not qualify. Why don't they So qualify? this is what you hear from the Pentagon all the time, Lord. Okay. Well, the reason we're not meeting our standards is because 77% of young people can't join. That's legit. I mean, we're too fat. We're not smart enough. Mm -hmm. uh, you got medical records uh, and other uh, criminal records. 77% mm -hmm. of 18-year-old kids can't join the military. That's a problem in and of itself. But that's a number that's more or less been the same for over a decade. So this is not new. This is not new. But it is, it's a real reason. But when they tell you that is the reason, it's not the only reason, Lawrence. So let's get into why. Yes, that's the big thing. The big reason is they're observing the types of recruiting ads and efforts that this military is pushing. Some folks who've seen this uh, network might remember this ad from mm -hmm. the military. Watch this. This is the story of a soldier who operates your nation's Patriot missile defense systems. It begins in California with a little girl raised by two moms. I also marched for equality. I like to think I've been defending freedom from an early age. So does this, I, I miss the recruitment effort. Does this in, inspire you? <laughs> no. All those young men in Kentucky and, mm -hmm. you know, Ohio and all of them, they say, oh, yeah, that's the army I want to join. They miss the mark. It's just like a Bud Light moment, Lawrence. Mm -hmm. We don't want those frat boys. We want a different type of demo. Well, there are only so many ladies with two mommies that want to join the army. Mm -hmm. You need normal, masculine men that want, and women, that want to join to fill our ranks and all. But guess what? You know, America don't promote masculine men. 
All right, they putting high levels of estrogen in our food, you know, and they got this big thing called toxic masculinity. So it's literally um you know, you get demonized for being masculine. But it turns around and bites them in the ass because now you got all these men that are effeminate, feminine and emotional and like dude said, fat, lazy, out of shape from all these GMO fast food. All right. Now you got a weak army. You got guys that don't want to go to the army. Which we don't push you going to the army. You know, we soldiers for you. How about Shim Yao Shai? But that's why, you know, the recruitment level of joining the military is at an all time low. You know, people. <laughs> all right. So, and ultimately, you know, Jake that's in the army, I know it's not easy, but you need to get out of there because ultimately you're going to be fighting against Yahweh. Y'all was shy in the midst of World War III. All right. Real so, quickly, Pete, when did this sort of push start? Like, is, how long start, has this been going on? It started on? under Obama, but it's been on hyperspeed under Biden. I mean, mm -hmm. Trump paused it and will, has said, he said in our interview he with him, I want to get rid of woke military. I believe he will. And recruiting will come back as a result of that. But, Lawrence, there are other reasons why, too. Um, so, this is not just the ads. Mm -hmm. You saw the vaccine mandate pushed out a lot of yep. conservative Christian, fo you know, folks that by by uh, principle didn't want to do that. The debacle in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. They looked at how our military was treated, how that was handled. Uh, then, of course, military families, Lawrence. We were talking about yeah, this I'm before the first the segment. generation not to serve. And, and Thirty-two percent in 2023 of military families are are recommending that the next generation serve. That's way down. But why is that happening? Because I hear from SF guys. Obviously, my family who all. And that's it. No, that's that's it on that. All right. So they pushing it to be eighteen to twenty six for the draft. Um. Con. So. And you know, and I believe, in my humble opinion, they're gonna lower the the age. I believe, you know, knowing Esau, it's not, it's not far fetched. I believe they'll even go as low as twelve. 12 to 55, in my humble opinion. Which, you can't put nothing past this devil. He He's capable of anything. And we've seen it. We know how Esau lies, how he lied, backtracked. That's why the scripture says, never trust thy enemy. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he lowered, lowered the age to 12 and go as high as 55 when that time do come. When they are drafting. So. Which is. You know. Ultimately the scripture speaking. We are in the time of. You know. The beginning of wars. Uh, the beginning of sorrows. Alright. That war talk is in the air. But. Yeah. I'm a, this The topic of this video is. You know. How. These wicked jakes, the Lord is going to literally put the spirit on this devil to draft the, these wicked Israelites, you know, of our nation, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, because the prophets of the Lord don't really, we don't got to worry about that, man. The Lord ain't going to have his men fighting in World War Three, you know? He wasn't called into this truth and to endure through all these afflictions and trials and tribulations. So lock it for that noise. Um, yeah, I got to put batteries in that thing, but we didn't get called into this truth to suffer, get afflicted, trials, tribulations, endure temptations, demons. All right. Wicked, scoffing niggas just to. Ultimately, you know, get thrown into World War Three to fight for Esau's kingdom. All right. That's not our lot. So prophets of the Lord don't have nothing to worry about. All right. 
Yahweh Bashem Yahushai will have his men. Although we will get tried and probably, you know, some of us thrown in prisons. But the Lord ain't going to have us get drafted. That's for these wicked jakes. These wicked ass two thirds. Pookies and Ray Rays, you know, like to flex they Glocks. Pistols, you know, whatever guns that they have. The little laser beam on it. These old uh, blonde tip dreadhead niggas flexing their guns. You know, these wicked jakes sitting on the day. They behind all day playing Call of Duty. The Lord going to send them niggas off in that day to fight in war. And they're going to get killed. You know, since they love guns so much, these old um, King Von and NBA young boy ass, little Dirk, two third nigglets, degenerates, since they love promoting guns and talking about blasting on their own people, they're going to have a chance to to flex their skills and ability to shoot. When they be out in the east over there fighting. This is Joel 2 and 20. But I will but I will remove far off from you the northern army, which is going to the Russians and also these other nations. Because these other nations they're gonna team up against well really they're gonna turn on the US, all right? These other nations, they're going to, you know, come up against the United States. So, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. All right. Going to my notes. The Saudi Arabian desert. All right. With his face toward the east sea. And his hinder part toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up. And his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. So. The Lord is going to literally. Sh- um. Send them niggas over there to die. They're gonna be. They're gonna be over there fighting, and they're gonna die, which is going to um. His ill savor shall come up. Is going into the dead bodies. That's going to be dropping and piling up over there. You know. So the Lord is going to kill all these wicked, all these wicked. You know, Israelites, especially these guys that's been um, vexing his men and offending his prophets, the Lord is going to send harsh judgment. And he's going to do that by what? You know, shipping them off to war. So that, that goes hand in hand with this scripture right here. Second Ezra sixteen and thirty three. The virgins shall the virgins shall mourn, having no bridegrooms. So the age is eighteen to twenty six, which I believe in that day they're gonna they're gonna hire that number to um you know the number the the maximum number. They're going to hide higher uh, the maximum number. They're going to raise it and the youngest, they're going to lower it. So that's just my humble opinion, because I do not trust the devil. Esau Edom. He's not a man of his word. So these women who are married to these wicked men. 
they're going to be mourning because in that day, a lot of men is going to be killed off at a large number, a mass number. So it links up to Isaiah, um, which I'll get it. You know, I will make a man more precious to find gold. It all starts to link up. You know, precept upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Because if uh, the vast majority of the men die, you know, that's going to make the Lord's men that more precious. Having that spiritual power, the Lord dealing with them and being able to um, be that salvation ticket. So the virgin shall mourn having no bridegrooms. The woman shall mourn having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn having no helpers. You know, right now you see these these wicked Israelites. That's degenerates. They're boasting with all the women, you know, committing adultery. All right. They're the ones getting all the women. Soon the Lord is going to be killing them niggas off at a great number with the most gruesome death. You know, especially these guys that that's um, offending the the Lord's men. And, you know, the Lord might have it to where you have a wicked Jake in your walk. That's that's there to, you know, tempt you or, or offend you. Nigga got demons on him, a bug out, you know. If these niggas not dying of the famine, they're going to get sent off to this war. So the woman shall mourn having no husbands. The daughter shall mourn having no helpers. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed. And their husbands shall perish of famine. So these niggas are going to be starving to death. Alright. No food. No Popeye's chicken sandwich. These niggas are going to be straight skin and bones. You know. They're going to be dehydrated. Like them uh, dry ass dregs they have on their head. You know. So. I think I quoted the wrong scripture. Um, it's Isaiah. And that, and you know, that links up to what? Isaiah 4 and 1. In that day, several women shall cleave on to one man. going to cleave on to who? The men of the Lord. Because they're going to be the only men left. And they're going to see who's the real prize. Isaiah 13 and 12. They're going to see who the prize is. And they're going to go back to their natural estate. Alright? And these women going to be getting... <laughs> hey, don't be surprised that these women going to... They're going to be getting drafted too. And it even said... um. These these transformers who were men at birth, they're going to be in there, too, which which shows you that they don't truly believe in that. They just pushing their agendas. All right. That that whole I identify as a woman ain't going to work. All right. Isaiah 13 and 12, I will make a man more precious to find gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So that's talking about the man of the Lord, the prophets of the Lord. Okay. Why? Because we have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord willing, we are those men. Ultimately, the Lord be dealing with them. So. 
Let these wicked niggas live it up now. Soon, and they will be perishing, dying of famine, and getting sent off to fight in the war. You know, um, shoot. They love America so much, they could, they could fight for it, die fighting for it. All right. Starve to death fighting for this place. While we die for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because ultimately, the ones that die for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, they will get risen up first. But, Lord willing, this video is edifying, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Rakakwadash. I'm Taziar Gabar from Prophets in Babylon, Waco, Texas. The barnas to the elders and the apostles of great millstone and peace salutations down to the hopeful elect. I'm going to say shalom.